Welcome to the Vue 3 Deep Dive with Evan Yu. This course is designed to help you learn how Vue is put together so you can more effectively build and scale your Vue applications. Most of this course will be taught by Evan. However, there are some core concepts that you need to be familiar with in order to really understand everything that he's talking about, from the DOM to virtual DOM to render functions to the three modules that make up the Vue core. In this video, I'm gonna give you a bit of an explainer so when Evan starts teaching, everything will be a little more understandable. We'll start with the basics, and if this seems too simple, just stay tuned, we'll get to the more advanced stuff in a second. So first of all, what is the DOM or document object model? This is our browser's interface to change what is displayed on the screen. So if we load this HTML into the browser, our browser creates these nodes, which it uses to display our web page. So this HTML maps to a series of DOM nodes that we can then manipulate using JavaScript. So to interact with the DOM, we can write JavaScript that looks like this, retrieve this element, we can change its text content to new heading, which updates the node, and then updates our browser. Web pages can have a lot of DOM nodes, which means DOM trees can have thousands of nodes. That's why we have frameworks like Vue to do the heavy lifting for us and make a lot of these JavaScript calls. However, searching and updating thousands of DOM nodes can obviously get slow. This is why Vue and other frameworks like it have something called the virtual DOM. The virtual DOM is a way of representing the DOM using JavaScript objects. For example, this HTML can also be represented by a virtual node, which looks like this. As you can see, it's simply a JavaScript object. Vue knows how to take this virtual node and mount it onto the DOM, which updates what we see in our browser. There's actually another step in here, where Vue creates a render function based on our template, which returns a virtual DOM node. Render functions can look something like this. When a component changes, the render function gets rerun, which creates another virtual node. We then send the old vNode and the new vNode into Vue to compare the two and make updates in the most efficient way onto our web page. An effective way of thinking about the virtual DOM versus the actual DOM are the blueprints and the actual building. Let's say I've changed some data on the 29th floor. I've changed the layout of my furniture and added some kitchen cabinets. There are two ways I can make these changes. First, I can demolish everything on the 29th floor and rebuild it from scratch. <laughs> or I can create new blueprints, compare the old and the new blueprints, and make updates to do the minimal amount of work. This is kind of how the virtual DOM works. And Vue 3 has become even more efficient at making these updates quickly, which is something you're gonna learn all about in this course. Vue has three core modules. There's the reactivity module, the compiler module, and the renderer module. Let's go through them one at a time. Our reactivity module allows us to create JavaScript reactive objects that can be watched for changes. When code which uses these objects are run, they're tracked, so they can be run later if the reactive object changes. I just finished creating an entire course on Vue 3 reactivity, which I highly recommend you take. If you take it before this course, things will be a lot more understandable when we get to the reactive part. Next is the compiler module. This knows how to take HTML templates and compile them into render functions. This can happen in the browser at runtime, but more often happens when a Vue project is built, so that a browser only ever receives render functions. Finally, the renderer module contains code for three different phases of rendering out a component onto a web page. There's the render phase, the mount phase, and the patch phase. In the render phase, the render function is called and it returns a virtual DOM node. In the mount phase, the render takes the virtual DOM node and makes DOM JavaScript calls to create a web page. Lastly, in the patch phase, the render takes the old virtual node, the new virtual node, compares the two, and updates only the parts of the web page that have changed using DOM JavaScript calls. There you have it, the three modules of Vue Core. Now, let's dive into an example and look at the execution of a simple component. 
So here you can see my simple component, and it has a template and a reactive object which is used inside the template. First, the template compiler changes the HTML into a render function. Then the reactive objects are initialized using the reactivity module. Next, inside the renderer module, we enter the render phase. This invokes the render function, which references the reactive object. We now watch this reactive object for changes, and a render function returns a virtual DOM node. Next, in the mount phase, the mount function is called using the virtual DOM node to create the web page. Lastly, if any changes happen to our reactive object, which is being watched, the renderer invokes the render function again, creating a new virtual DOM node. Both the new and the old virtual DOM node get sent in to the patch function, which then makes updates to our web page as needed. Okay. With this information, it should be a lot easier to get through the information that Evan's going to throw at you in the next few lessons. Hope you enjoy it. There are some benefits of having a virtual DOM layer. The most important one is that it completely decouples your component rendering logic from the actual DOM and makes it more straightforward to reuse the runtime of a framework uh, in other environments. For example, Vue allows third-party developers to create customized rendering solutions that targets not just the browser, but also native environments like iOS and Android. It is also possible to use the API to create a custom renderer that directly renders to WebGL instead of DOM nodes. So in Vue 2, we in fact already have this capability. However, the API we provided in Vue 2 was not officially documented and required forking our source code in order to maintain it. So that places a lot of maintenance burden on the developers developing these custom solutions. In V3, we are making the custom renderer API a first class API. So developers can directly pull in view runtime core as a dependency and then leverage the custom renderer API to build their own custom renderer. In fact, we already have early users reporting that they've successfully built a WebGL renderer using the Vue 3 API. Another important aspect about Virtual DOM is it provides the ability to programmatically construct, inspect, clone, and manipulate the desired DOM structure before actually returning it to the rendering engine. And you can do all of this with the full power of JavaScript. Now, this ability is important because there will eventually be certain cases in UI programming where the template syntax will be somewhat limiting and you just need to have the full flexibility of a proper programming language to express the underlying logic. Now, such cases is in fact pretty rare in day-to-day -day UI development. It happens more often when you are authoring a library or authoring a UI component suite that you intend to ship to be used by third-party developers. Let's imagine components like a complex type of head box or an input box associated with a bunch of tags. These types of components typically contain very little markup, but they will contain a lot of interactive logic. And in those cases, the template syntax sometimes would actually restrict you from expressing the underlying logic easier. Or sometimes you will find yourself putting a lot of logic into the templates, but you also still have a lot of logic separated in JavaScript. Whereas render function allows you to sort of combine all the logic in one place, and you don't typically don't really need to think too much about the markup in those situations. So what I'm getting from you is that Templates will get you where you want to go and just writing out the HTML mm -hmm. like 99% of the time. But every once in a while, you might want to do something more programmatically. And yep. in that case, you exactly. want to code up a render function. Yep. And what does a render function look like? So a render function in Vue 2 looks like this. So this is an option in your component definition. Instead of providing a template option, you can give your component a render function instead. In Vue 2, you will receive the H argument that we talked about earlier directly as an argument to the render function. And you can use that to create what we call virtual DOM nodes, or V nodes for short. A V node takes the first argument is the type. So here we're creating a div. The second argument is an object containing all the data or props on the V node. 
In V2, the API is a little bit verbose in the sense that um, you have to be specific about what type of binding you're passing to the node. Uh, for example, if you want to bind an attribute, you have to nest it under the ATTRs object. And if you want to bind an event listener, you have to nest it under on. And the third argument is the child nodes of this V node. So directly passing a string is a convenient API for you to say this node only contains text children. But it can also be an array that contains more child nodes. So you can, you can have an array here and nested with more nested H calls. Now, we changed the API with the goal of simplifying it in Vue 3. The first notable change is we now have a flat prop structure. In a sense, when you call h, the second argument now is always a flat object, and you can directly pass an attribute to it. Uh, here, we are just giving it an ID. And event listeners, by convention, will start with on. So anything with on will automatically be bound as an event listener. So you don't have to think about the nesting that much. In most cases, you also don't need to think about whether this should be bound as an attribute or a DOM property because Vue will intelligently figure out the best way to do it for you. We, in fact, check whether this key exists on the native DOM node as a property. And if there is a property, we'll set it as a property. If it doesn't exist, we'll just set it as an attribute. And it has been working out well so far in practice. I know that uh, the original sort of virtual DOM implementation, you mm -hmm. took inspiration from other projects. Yes. Is that correct? Um, there was a library called SnapDOM, which was Vue2's virtual DOM was essentially forked from that. Okay. Yeah. And then Vue3, the way you coded it here, is this just improving upon the patterns? Uh, from well, Vue2 Vue3 or? was kind of a complete rewrite. So, nice. pretty much from the ground up, everything is just custom. Obviously, uh, there are existing algorithms or say like node diffing because uh, these are areas that have we've seen the community doing extensive research on. So if this is built upon knowledge of all these previous implementations, but the code is, itself is now uh, written from the ground up. Wow. Yeah. And that's all in TypeScript, right? Yes, all in TypeScript. Nice. Yeah. Another change about the render function API is the H helper is now globally imported directly from Vue itself. This change mainly comes from the frustration from some users when in Vue 2, because the H is passed here, and in fact, this H is special because it's bound to the current component instance. So when you want to split a large render function into smaller ones, you actually have to pass this H all the way through mm. these split functions. So that kind of makes it a bit difficult to, uh, it's just a little annoyance, but with the globally imported H, you can import it once and you can split your render function into as many ones as you want in the same file without having to think about it. Oh, I see. The render function doesn't have an argument of H right. anymore. Well, internally, it does receive arguments, but that's used only by the compiler-generated code. When users use it directly, they always just grab stuff off of this. Mm. Yeah. So if you use the TypeScript with the Define Component API, you'll get full type inference on this as well. Wow. 